We've been here a good two or three hours so far. It's been a beautiful morning, but um, we've put a couple of rods out each, and uh, we've just come down the bank for a little walk, and uh, we found a couple of fish, maybe two or three fish. Heads down, tails up, having a good old go on something on the bottom, and uh, to be honest, it's too too good of an opportunity to miss. We both ran back down, grabbed a rod each. Quickly, uh, quickly sorted out a rod. And we've come back down to this little intimate little corner, hoping that they'll come scoot back around the edge and come back down here because um, the fizzing up stopped, but they've moved a little bit up further up the bank. We've seen them, so I'm hoping that they're going to keep coming up and down, up and down, and then obviously come across one of our two patches of uh, of bait. We've not plowed, we've not plowed any bait in here or anything. We've just literally gone back down. Sorted out a rig and sorted out a bag each, and we've just lowered in it, lowered them in, hoping that they uh, they come back down. So yeah, we're gonna spend the day here today down at this private venue and um, see if we can nick ourselves a fish. I've never fished it before, um, so you know I don't know to go in bait or you know this or that or the other. All I know is that we found some fish quite early on now, so we're gonna try and. Uh, try and catch ourselves one. I'll just quickly swing the camera around so you can see what we're doing. So we've got this little corner just scoots around. Little corner bit here. And they were literally just fizzing up just off here. Mark's got one just tucked up off this tree. So all they've got to do is come around this little bay area showing a little bit further up just a minute ago so I'm hoping that they're going to come up and down up and down but uh, I've lowered in a solid bag just off the edge of this tree so if they do come down and get in under, underneath this tree there's going to be a nice little patch of bait just there got a single um, tough manila just wheeled down just um, took the edges off the bait it's got some pellet and some uh, crumbed sort of chopped up manila inside it so there's a lot of little bit little bits and pieces in there to get them grubbing around then obviously a real basic solid bag rig but yeah that's just been lowered in down here so um so yeah hoping just hoping that they'll come back down that margin and uh and have another go if they've always if they've already found bait down here and they know that there's bits and pieces then they might just come back down but, uh, but yeah, the weather's looking all right. When it pokes out these clouds above my head, it's going to be right in this corner. So, uh, so yeah, we're definitely going to be um, sitting tight here for a good hour or two at least until, you know, until we feel the moments pass or we might have missed our opportunity, you know. But at the moment, we've got a couple of rods out and, uh, yeah, we're hopeful of nicking a bite. So we stayed down in that corner for the best part of at least an hour and a half, pushed two hours, but um, seems like the fish didn't reappear, didn't come back for a second look on the, on the bait that we had down there and whatever they might have got on before we was there. So we've um, just been back to where we've uh, plotted up for the day, just made a little bucket of uh, goodies ready to go and dump down in this corner really. Obviously we've already known that they've visited that area. So uh, we're going to go and try and put some bait down there and hope they come back for some more. It's around sort of midday now, so we're uh, going to have some grub ourselves, get fueled up for the afternoon, and then uh, come and fish a few margin spots. We think we might even get around the other side because it's uh, shallower, the other side, where this is a straight drop off on this bank, down into about six foot of water. So uh, when that sun gets behind us, we might get around on the other side where it's heating up that shallower water where they might just venture in a little bit closer and uh, yeah see if we can maybe nick one out the other side but um, at the moment we'll just come back down little bucket of goodies just got some pellet in there that's been soaking in all just been soaking in some oil got some chops as well just 
make a little carpet and some uh, dead maggot in there. So just going to bait up where we see them fizzing up earlier and I mean they were proper fizzing. Just going to bait that up and uh, obviously give it half an hour, keep popping down here like I say every half an hour and um, yeah see if they've moved back in and uh, got on this little bit of carpet feed. So uh, yeah we're just going to get that done now. Like I say get it all down there, hopefully get them grubbing around, come and drop a uh, drop a rig back on them if we do see anything back down here and uh, fingers crossed we might even be able to nick one but um, yeah I'll catch up with you in a little while if anything doesn't happen before right then as you can see got a rod just over my shoulder we uh, like I said on the last little clip we went for a little one um, little wander didn't really pay off really, I think we might have missed, that, missed the fish down in that corner by uh, by the time we got our uh, rigs and bags and stuff ready so we've been back to the swim and uh, had a bit of food and stuff like that I finished up and decided to go for a little walk and um, I found a few fish on the other side of the lake just scooting up and down um, sort of maybe a foot or so under the surface um, only about two rod lengths out, three rod lengths tops. So me and Mark have uh, just done one rod each and just brought them round. These two, two little spots down, and I'm just in between these two little, uh, two little lily beds. Sort of, I don't know about here. It's a lily bed here and one sort of a little bit further, and I'm just literally dropped a solid bag right in between them and just put five uh, halved sort of crumbed baits just scattered around really just to uh, try and pick up any fish that may be scooting up and down this margin it will see in the sun um, before I come round but it seems to become over a little bit overcast and the wind's picked up a bit now but um, but yeah I'm going to sit in here I think for an hour or so see if this see if these fish come back see if they uh, come across this bag it's quite deep down there to be fair I reckon it's a good four or five foot at best um, but it goes down nice and firmly, there's a nice solid bag down there, a bit of crumb boily, some little pellets and a little wafter inside. So, uh, so yeah, just going to sit back, be patient and uh, see if anything happens, so fingers crossed. But I think the uh, main aim of this session is that we're going to have to stay mobile really. Going to have to, um, you know, keep redoing solid bags and just going for a walk and trying different little spots. Because um, the weather ain't the greatest for fishing to be fair. It's, like I say, it has mainly been sunny and stuff all day, so we're just going to stay active, stay mobile. Like I say, take a rod and a mat and a net with us and just keep travelling around the lake and maybe try and drop onto a fish here or there. But uh, I'll leave it there for now. And um, as we always say, fingers crossed, I'll come back with you with a fish. So uh, I'll catch up with you a little bit later on, hopefully. Right then. So, obviously this blog's been pretty much whispering throughout because uh, most of this fishing has been quite up close and personal. Um, as you have seen from the previous clip, we was up around on the uh, one of the sides after seeing a couple of fish mooching up and down. But um, we spent a good hour or so in there, and uh, nothing materialised. But we've just come down this back bank. Although it looks overcast now, it was absolutely blue skies about five minutes ago, and uh, we literally see probably about 20 fish out in front in this margin, literally all up and down all the way just crawling with fish we stood there for a good five minutes watching them and uh, they've been scooting backwards and forwards so uh, me and Mark has been back to the swim we've uh, grabbed some bits and we've come down here with one rod each again hoping to nick a margin bite we've seen them in front of us they still here like I said they are scooting up and down the birds are driving us mad at the moment because they're uh, they know that it's uh, pretty shallow down there and uh, I think they've clocked obviously what we've been doing so we're just trying to drive them away at the moment but um, but yeah there's fish down this end and uh, probably a good third of the lake stock down here so uh, wind's picking up hopefully going to push them down and uh, get their heads down but um, obviously if anything happens in between then and now I'll uh, 
I'll come back to you. But uh, yeah, it's looking much more promising than, than any any other point throughout the day. Like I say, we've seen a good amount of fish down here, so there's a good chance that we can uh, nick ourselves a fish down here. We've both just got more solid bags, a bit of pellet, dead maggot, and uh, some crumbed up manila boilies. And we've just lowered them in without making any sound. So hopefully there should be a nice couple of parcels of bait down there waiting for them. But, uh, but yeah, fingers crossed that one of our uh, rolls rattles off and we'll be coming to you next time with a nice fish on the mat. So uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Right then, so the reward of a few hours stalking, done a, done a lap of the lake, a couple of laps of the lake, plotted up up and down the bank, and here's our reward, nice 14 and 3 quarter mirror, literally the rod had been out 5 minutes wasn't it mate, literally yep. we both lowered one down in the edge, we've seen fish up and down this margin, lowered it down probably less than 5-10 minutes, just as, just after I'd agreed to a, uh, a kebab deal, old spawny balls here. <laughs> goes in nick to one straight away great little scrap under the rod tip but yeah absolutely pristine little mirror quality little scale pattern on him give him a good little scrap under the uh under the rod tip those solid bag uh, tactics seems to work ain't they bud yeah, so definitely we're gonna well, it's uh, got a mixture in there wasn't it yeah and pellet a bit of dead maggot a few crammed up boilies and stuff the sun's coming back out now so we're hoping that they're gonna start mooching up and down this bank again but we've been doing some pictures so we're gonna slip it back and fingers crossed it's my turn next, but yeah, well done buddy, nice, nice one. one. Cheers mate. Cheers. So as you uh, would have seen just a minute ago, Mark was uh, lucky enough to bag us a fish. Now, um, obviously because of the commotion that that fish would have caused down in that little corner bay area, area we've uh, moved down a couple of swims along this bank and uh, there's fish in front of us in here as well. So I think, fingers crossed, only a matter of time and uh, we might have ourselves another fish. We've already seen surface disturbance. We're obviously so shallow against up against this margin area. So. Um, so yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, one of us gets another chance at another fish. But um, this is the style of fishing me and Mark both like. Fishing under our rod, trips, uh, rod tips, laying little traps, etc. Um, <clears throat> again, we've just gone in with two solid bags, lowered them either side. Um, the solid bags just consist of real micro pellet, dead maggots and a bit of boily crumb so literally just a real little basic carpet feed really so obviously as that bag melts and uh, that little bit of um, you know bits and pieces inside the bag just make a nice little carpet and obviously our uh, wafters are sat amongst them so uh, fingers crossed we can nick a fish out of here and then what we'll probably do is go back up to where we started and just keep working this bank really and hopefully keep nicking fish off it's about 10 past four so um we've got plenty of time yet to try and nick ourselves another fish mate whoa, whoa, whoa. yes whoa. you're in all right then so i don't know how much of uh how much of that you caught on camera but uh mark said that he saw um we saw a fish tails up down in the right hand side and uh, again no sooner had that rig been down there probably even quicker than uh, even quicker than the last one and he's into another fish happy days then so uh, Mark's got himself two kebabs now <laughs> but uh, yeah, we moved down two swims from where we were originally because we thought you know we might spook them out of where we were. Literally done our rods again, a couple of solid bags, moved down here, probably even quicker than the last swim that we were just in, literally five minutes. And then this commons made a little appearance, we're flipping around because he's really cool. It's like a two-tone, two-tone common. He's got a bit ghosty-like in his head as well, but uh, this side's pretty cool, got a nice, 
like a two-tone scale pattern to it. But it's literally like a straight line of scales. But uh, yeah, probably like what, 12, 13 pound maybe at best. But quality little scrap under the raw tip. So what we're gonna do now is slip him back, get back down in the corner where we were just a minute ago, and just keep alternating between the uh, between the swims. But they're down here, they keep mooching up and down, so we're gonna try to, for that mix all the time. Yeah, right? keep trying picking them off one by one with these little solid bags. So that's the only bit of food that they got up and down this margin. We're not putting bait in here, there and everywhere, it's just these little parcels and uh, they seem to be snaffling them up, mate. So yeah, happy days. So slip it back, go nick ourselves another one. You can manage free kebabs, can't you? Oh yeah. Standard night for him. Yeah, as long as they're not large. I right, <laughs> just really want to quickly run through what we're doing with our solid bags, really. So we've just got the little smaller sized ESP ones. I've always used them. Not that I do a lot of solid bag fishing, but they're just a perfect size for a perfect parcel of food, really. So all I'm doing is obviously rig, dropping it inside the bag, and just arranging it so that the, the bait lays in one corner and uh, the hook's just laying flush along the bottom of the bag really. It takes a little bit of messing around. Like I think to myself, if it's gonna go down there, then I want it all to be um, you know, presenta uh, presented and laying down properly. So just squish the bait into the corner so that sits down. And just give it a little shake really so the hook's laying flush to the uh, bottom of the bag. And obviously the hair and stuff's all laying down nicely. You know, I know some of you guys can probably bash these out a lot quicker than I can, but um, I'd just like to make sure that it's all laying down perfectly really so that's in place now all I'm going to do is get some micro pellet bag just put a slight you know about a centimetre coating of micro pellet into the bag just so it covers that hook point nothing can go you know penetrating the hook point etc and then uh, what we've got here boily grounded up and there's also some dead maggot in there as well don't know whether it's making a difference or not, but it certainly ain't doing us any, you know, ain't doing us any bad. So, just going to crumb up some of that again. A couple of centimeters worth of that. Just stick some pellet on top. You're just building a bag up in any way you really want to. To be honest, there's no right or wrongs to solid bags. To be fair, just tend to keep it in smaller pieces because it's easier to compact down. So that's about you know two thirds full. Not really putting loads in there. To be fair, just drop the lead into the center of the bag. We're only under our, you know, dropping these out underneath our rod tips so they don't have to be, you know, immaculately formed in any shape. But obviously if you're fishing at distance you want them compact and as tight as you can get them. So there we go, three quarters full. Just give it a little prod down just to bed it all down. Just it's easier to tighten it up around the uh, tubing or the stem, whatever you're using. Just wet in my fingers, run it in around that free bit at the top, twizzle it around, and you'll find that it sticks to the stem or the tubing, whatever you're using. So to be honest, you could probably just dump it out in the underneath a rod tip like that, but I'm a bit of a neat freak myself, so I just like to tidy it up anyway. I think it helps as well when it's down there, just to give it that sort of explosion. Um, the tighter it is, obviously, once that PVA melts, it all just explodes and makes a nice little carpet. So, give the corners a little dab, stick them down, hold it down for like 10 seconds. You notice that the corner's gone in, same with this one. Just push the bait in, little tap, you get that extra little bit there. Give them a little lick, and stick down, you should find that, that corner's down. Like I say, it's not the tightest, it's not the most compact, but we're only fishing under our rod tips. But obviously the tighter you make these, the more aerodynamic they are. And obviously you can put these out at distance. But uh, that's one perfect little parcel of food. It's obviously done Mark two fish already. So uh, unless he's going to be greedy, he might let me have a turn now, to be fair. So we're going to fish back on these same spots that we were on, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes to go. See if we can catch ourselves another one. So it's about half past six now, and um, I'll just move down from the swim to the left because uh, typically I just had a bloody tench. Just as me and Mark were saying, oh, I was looking banging for another bite. We wanted to spend the last hour up there because we didn't want to stay too late anyway, obviously, with it being Sunday night, etc. But I 
helped him. But yeah, I'd had a bloody tench. So I quickly knocked up a solid bag. And I said, that's it, I'm gonna come down in this corner and uh, just give it the last half hour. Obviously it all changed up there in the space of half an hour when we move around, so there's uh, always a chance of a bite as you can see. Just down here. A rod laying down, just poking out between the uh, between the reeds. I've just kept it real low key, really close in, just literally under the rod tip again with one of those solid bags. And uh, fingers crossed I can nick one before the day's out, but to be honest, I'm absolutely buzzing for Mark that he's had a couple of fish. And uh, it was good to obviously get them on camera as well, so I'm not that bothered if I don't catch, but obviously it would just, uh, just end the day on a little bit of a high. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave it like this for now. This might be the last you hear from me on this uh, on this session. Sorry, it's, uh, sorry, it's been kind of like a little bit sort of short and sharp, really. Um, the weather's been so up and down, and like it turned into more of a stalking session than than an actual sort of you know bait and wait sort of session. So it's good to get around, get around the lake and fish under our rod tips. So. Fingers crossed if I nick one before they'll see the, the night's out, then obviously I'll flick the camera back on. But um, if not, I've not decided if this would be a uh, sort of individual little short blog or whether it would be um, part of Martin's movements the uh, August uh, August one. But uh, obviously next week I'm doing 48 hours on Orchid, 48 hours on Linear, and then finishing off down the Syndicate um, for the week. So. Uh, so yeah, I might just keep this one as a short little day session vlog and just kind of fill it, fill it out. But uh, rabbiting on now, so I'll shut up and leave you to it. And like I say, if I don't come back to you before the session's over, I'll, um, I will catch up with you soon. But yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe as always. Keep up to date with my little, my little adventures and you know what I'm getting out and about and doing on the bank. Don't forget to come over to my Facebook page, say hello, you know, ask anything about, you know, where I'm fishing, rigs, anything like that. But, um, but yeah, thanks for watching. We'll, uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Cheers. See ya.